Have the Bulls brought the game into disrepute? Have they disrespected the competition by sending a weakened team to their Champions Cup quarter-final match away in Northampton? That is the accusation that's been levelled at them. That's what's been reported. That's the story that is spreading around. And um, it's what I want to talk about here. And I want, most importantly, I want to know what you think about this one. What do you make of this? I've got lots I want to say. I wanted to keep it separate from the rugby itself. The rugby's been fantastic on the pitch today in the Champions Cup quarterfinals. Some of my thoughts on all three of the games today, they're in the channel. It's a reason why you should subscribe because you get notifications when there's new content up. But for now, I want to talk about this story, which is gaining traction. It was reported by The Times. Other people are picking up on this, criticising the Bulls. And do you know what? I, th I think I always come back to at times like this. Two things can be true at once. Have the Bulls sent a weakened team to their... Did they send a weakened team to their Champions Cup quarterfinal in Northampton? Yes, they did. Does that mean they've disrespected the competition? No. Two things can be true at the same time. Here's another two things that are true at the same time. Would I like to have seen Kurtley Arentz, Kane and Moody, Vili LaRue and the rest playing in the Champions Cup quarterfinal match in Northampton? 100% yes. Do I understand why Jake White and his coaching team decided not to, 100% yes. Two things can be true at the same time. Now, this story suggests that there is a source, I don't know who the source is, unnamed at this point, but I know the journalist who's written this story is a legit journalist and is a good bloke, so he wouldn't have made this up. There is a source that's suggesting that the Bulls may well be investigated for their decision to field the team that they fielded. I find this absolutely ludicrous, and here's why. EPCR, the very people administering the competition, who presumably will be the ones who are investigating the Bulls for their team selection, they ask every team at the start of the Champions Cup season to name 41 players for their Champions Cup squad. If you want to get, ask a team to name 41 players for their Champions Cup squad, you cannot then complain about which 41, which 23 of those 41 players a coach decides to use in any given game. That's their business, not yours. If you want to make it um, higher concentration of better players for every match, reduce the size of that squad. But don't let them pick a squad of 41 and then complain about which 23 players out of those 41 that they pick. Otherwise, you're going to have to do the same for Leon last week in the round of 16, who sent a massively weakened team to Pretoria. You're going to have to investigate um, many teams that did it in the pool stages because they decided that it wasn't worth either the, the, the physical toll on their players traveling and playing in an away game and they had other things that they needed, they needed to think about. You need to have your outrage aimed at those teams as well. It, I understand quarterfinals are, 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 are a bit different, they're more important, you're down to the last eight, but nevertheless I'll just come back to that fundamental point. It's up to a coach what team they pick because they have to manage a team through an entire season, not just your competition. And in this particular stage, well, let's just let's just look at where the Bulls are at in their season. Next week, they play Munster in the URC. Massive game, that. If they win that game against Munster, they're very, very close. In fact, they, will they actually tie up? If, if they don't tie up, they're getting very close to getting a home semi-final spot for the playoffs when they come around, which is massive. That avoids travelling to Europe. Getting the highest possible seeding in the URC is massive for their season. They were already travelling away for this game. So I, so I understand that with Munster next week, travelling across continents halfway around the world and back is quite a difficult thing to do when you're an elite athlete. And then the thought that after two weeks of URC matches, you might then have to fly back to Europe for another Champions Cup semi-final which, while it would be fantastic if they could manage all that, is a massive toll on the players. And I, so again, would I like the Bulls to have picked their strongest team? 100%. Do I understand why they didn't? 100%. And here's the thing. The other thing that you always hear, whether it's the EPCR, whether it's World Rugby, any individual union, do you know what they say all the time? And they say it constantly. Player welfare is the most important thing. And then you always see through that, that quite often these are kind of empty words when, when things like this happen. Player welfare is the most important thing. Okay, well, we want to take care of our player welfare and not send them halfway around the world um, 
a, a bunch of times. But you can't do that because I, I want the I want my competition to be the most important and the best thing it can be. Well, again, you can't have both things. So this player welfare stuff, they like to talk a good talk, but when it comes to it, like it's the perfect example. We've had this week talk about a, a world club championship. In other words, more games, more travelling around the world. Why? Money. What's the, what, at what cost? Player welfare. They talk about player welfare, but when it actually comes to it, that's, that's not the biggest priority. Money, prestige is. And I get that that's important, but just don't lie about it. Just be honest about it. Just say you've really screwed up our competition here and our sponsors aren't happy and there'll be people watching, our viewing figures won't be as high. And then the discussion is, well, okay, well, how do you solve that? Maybe have a think about your scheduling the season before you start. Maybe stop tinkering with the competition and changing the rules so you can introduce a round of 16 and getting to this point. Like, have a think about how you structure in your season so that when you invite teams from another continent halfway around the world, you take into account the fact that all this travelling might be going on and they have other priorities that they need to think about. It's just never joined up, is it? And I, I mean, I say this to my kids. They're, I, I, say, well, I say to my kids, and I've said, that, you know, they're teenagers now, but I've, I've said to them all the time growing up, there's choices and there's consequences. And this is exactly what I'd say to EPCR and rugby administrators in general. There are choices and there are consequences. The choice was, and the choice you made, we would like to have South African teams in our, what was, European Cup, now Champions Cup competition. We'd like the South African teams to be involved. Okay, that's your choice. What's the consequence? Consequence number one, money. Great, opens it up to a massive rugby mad South African audience. Totally get it. Synergy with the URC competition and league placings in that. Totally get it, makes absolute sense. Those are both consequences of that choice. What are the other consequences of that choice? Well, uh, there's a couple. Firstly, South African teams do not have the 25, 30 year history with this competition that French, English, Welsh, Scottish, Irish, and more recently Italian clubs have. So it doesn't mean the same to these fans in South Africa as it does. I have loved this competition for 25 years. I grew up and my, some of my favorite rugby matches watching are Champions Cup games. South African fans haven't got that connection with the competition yet. That's going to take time. So you chose to have them in. The consequence is this relationship with the competition is going to take time to build. Again, the choice, we want the South African teams in. The consequence, there's loads of travelling involved. And that means that coaches are going to have to make difficult decisions. So once again, I'll read a story like this. And do you know what? That's kind of what I think about it. I sort of hoped it was an April Fool's story when I saw it, but then it's the 13th now. It would have been two weeks late. I just, I, I don't know if this story is going anywhere, if there is going to be an investigation. I hope not. And as much as anything, and the final thing I'll say is, you want to talk about disrespect, disrespecting the integrity of the Champions Cup. How about disrespecting 23 professional rugby players from the Bulls? They were handily beaten by Northampton. No complaints there. But that is disrespect in my mind. You ask the Bulls to name 41 players for their squad and then you say that they're throwing the towel in when they pick 23 of those 41 players. That's disrespect. So we'll wait and see if any, anything actually comes of this story. It could be a storm in a teacup. It could, it could come to nothing. Um, I'll be interested to see whether there's the same scrutiny of Leon. I'd be interested to see whether there's the same scrutiny. I'm just thinking of other things, and I'm not com I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm going to mention Leinster for a second. I totally get why Leinster did, did this. I'm not complaining about it, but um, in the URC, Leinster sent a really weakened team to Pretoria. Why? Because they didn't want to have all that travel in their international players, and there were there were other things that they were fighting for. Totally get it. As a result, I think Leinster got well beaten, didn't they, that day? And, and also, in the URC last year, in a semi-final, so not, not the Champions Cup, but it was a semi-final of the URC, and Leinster picked a weakened team, weakened team, against Munster in the semi-final, and they lost as a result. It was a gamble. It didn't pay off that time. Do I understand why Leinster did it? 100%. 
because they would have had to have gone back to back to back URC Champions Cup, URC Champions Cup. And it's really tough to do when you're battling on all fronts. So would I like to have seen the best Leinster team last season in the URC semi-final? Absolutely. Do I understand why Leo Cullen made that call? 100%. Same goes with Jake White now. So um, there's my thoughts. Hopefully some of that made sense. And I want to know your comments down below. I'll see you on the next video, which hopefully will be more positive and more rugby.